Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is going to be my review of the Sennheiser IE600, primarily for gaming purposes. I will touch into how I enjoy the IEM for my music tracks that I personally am listening to right now, but I do first want to give you guys a little bit of the unboxing experience and show you what you get with the Sennheiser IE600. Anybody who's owned a Sennheiser product, the box is very similar to their over-the-ear headphones as well as all of the other IEMs in their line. With the outer casing removed, you do get this little pull-out box, and the first thing that you are met with are these metal housing IE600s, which are the single dynamic drivers in each side. And once that is removed, you get your little warranty card and your certificate of authenticity, which is, of course, nice to see, especially when you're spending the amount of money that you are. You have a little tray of all of the IEM ear tips. You have your silicone as well as your foam, and you have... Uh, a little clip here for the cable and a carrying case, which does in-house another cable. It does come with a 4.4 cable and it does come with a 3.5 cable. And the cable um, is okay. I don't hate it. I don't love it. But it is nice to see that you do have two cable options here uh, for interchanging between different outputs. Just to get you guys a little bit closer to the IE600, I really do think that what they've done here with the 3D printed metal housing, it really is a enjoyable IEM as far as fit. The nozzle is not that wide, it is not that deep, so I do think that the fit here will be great for a whole lot of people. In terms of comfort, after about three or four hours of use, the metal housing actually did kind of affect my ears. Um, definitely the density of the material itself. It's unforgiving flex in that material since it is full metal. It does kind of affect me a little bit more than something like an acrylic or a resin. Again, the IEM has a single dynamic driver on each side and they have what uh, Sennheiser refers to as dual resonator chambers. And with that full metal housing, the sound does change quite significantly from the IE300 over to the IE600. For music listening purposes, the tracks that I'm listening to right now range anywhere from The Beatles, Modest Yahoo, Sublime, Red Hot Chili Peppers. In terms of what I am particularly enjoying right now, um, listening to something like J. Cole or Kendrick Lamar, the bass is definitely very impactful and there's a lot of force behind it, but I never felt that the bass overshadowed or overpowered those low mids. So you get a very impactful bump and thud on that bass. You get that sub bass that feels clean, textured, and dynamic, but never again overpowers those mids. So you get good male vocals. I feel like female vocals were even better on this. The highs are smooth and they felt like they had a little bit of airiness to it and a lot of sparkle. I never had any sibilance on these. So I do think that for the entirety of the range, it is a very capable IEM. Again, the mids were smooth, they felt natural, and I would say that the mids felt a little bit of warmth, but not something that was, again, overpowering to the extent of becoming overly warm. It was more neutral, more natural for me than something that is very, very warm and just overshadowing the naturalness of the tonality. I, I never felt like the bass was bloated. Um, so I think that it's a really nice IEM to listen to for music listening purposes or in entertainment. And if I was to solely be buying these for that purpose, I would be fully content with the IE600. But I am using them primarily for gaming with maybe a third of my use for music listening and entertainment. So I do want to get into how these perform for your tax shooters as well as your open, broad, expansive maps like your Battle Royales like Apex Legends. Let's get into it. Okay, guys, this segment is going to be a little bit longer than usual because I have a lot to say about the IE600. As much as I wish these worked in-game because I love that sound representation and I love its tonality for the tracks that I listen to, it falls very flat for gaming use case scenarios and it will not be joining the Wallhack tier list. Compared to the Raptio Hook X, which is my number two, my Dunu Vulcan, which is my current number one, which both could interchange in either the number one or number two slot, they're both extremely good, extremely capable. The IE600 has some very significant flaws for gaming purposes. I almost feel that when you are playing something like Valorant or Apex Legends, and I will throw up clips on my left throughout this segment, um, I get a general sense of where things are coming from. So I can still play at a fairly good level, but not a comfortable level for what I am used to. The IE600, when something is coming at you in kind of a frontal cone, if something, an enemy is coming at me in this area of view, 
I get a very decent representation of where they are in depth perception, but vertical imaging is so poor on these that if somebody is below you, let's say you are on the construction building in Apex Legends and somebody is one uh, floor below you or on the bottom of the building or off to a distance below you, you kind of lose the vertical imaging on this IEM and it's like the sound doesn't know where to go and it almost falls in that comfort area of the IEM, which is this frontal cone. So if somebody is below you or above you and they're performing audio cues, it almost feels as though it's coming from within you and you almost lose a lot of the separation that these do have when things are falling into this vicinity. And that's very bad because if you are on that singular playing floor, um, let's say you are on the top floor and you have enemies on that floor, you will lose a sense of urgency on what you need to focus on first and what you need to put your attention into because those audio cues that are above or below you um, are kind of fooling and tricking you into believing they're a little bit closer to you than what they are. You lose that depth perception, so you kind of lose what you should be able to focus on on that one floor that you are on. Again, you get a kind of a general vicinity of where people are and where you need to be focusing on when people are on that singular playing field, that same level as you. Uh, but the staging really isn't that great here. I feel like it is a hair more airy than something like the Dunu Vulcan, so you lose a bit of that emphasis. But the staging here, again, you kind of just don't have that wide of a stage, and the vertical staging is just very, very poor on these. The micro detail that comes out of this IEM in-game is okay. You get a very decent sense of little things, people reloading, uh, the sound, little sound cues of people changing weapons, reloading, etc. Uh, but it's not as impactful as something like the Rapgo or the Dunu Vulcan, so you definitely lose a bit of that perception on that micro detail as well. I would say, again, the worst thing about the IE600, other than that verticality, is just depth perception in general. Yes, you get a general sense of where somebody is, just like you did on the Moondrop Aria, but you don't have a very accurate representation of how far they are away from you, and you kind of lose a bit of that crosshair placement because you lose that depth perception. So it will affect you in-game, especially if you are playing at a extremely high level where you know how to focus on these things and you know where to put your crosshair placement, how to compartmentalize uh, what you need to focus on and when. The personal cues coming from you, so when you're shooting, when you're reloading, when you're performing actions, they're not that overpowering on the IE600. When somebody is on that same playing field again, I can still kind of hear things happening around me. So it wasn't too bad in that regard. The separation wasn't as good as something like the Dunu Vulcan or the Rapgo Hook X. In Apex Legends, and I, I do also have a note here in Valorant that the depth perception was a little bit worse um, when audio cues were coming behind you instead of in that little frontal conal area. Depth perception was a little bit better again in that frontal cone. In terms of Apex, there is so much verticality in Apex, and for the reasons that we've already discussed, I would not be able to recommend the IE600, especially for purposes of ranking up. In Apex Legends, there are so many scenarios of third parties, especially this season, that you will have multiple enemies below you, multiple enemies above you, enemies coming from a distance that are above or below you, and you just lose all sense of urgency and what you need to focus on first, and it will mess with you in Apex Legends. And for that very reason alone, I would not recommend these and I would not add them to uh, the wall hack tier list. I did note that the separation was okay, but not great when it came again from your own personal sound cues. Um, and again, I have here um, literally some of the worst uh, depth perception I've used. So um, the directional audio is there with a generality, but vague and not precise. And you just lose a bit of the precision that you get when you're either using over the ears like the DT900 Pro X, the HD560s, and other IEMs that I do have on the wall hack tier list, 
like the Dooney Vulcan and the Rapco Hook X. Even the budget option, the True Theory Critical Zero, I would use in game over the IE 600s. So guys, I want to be very specifically clear that for music listening purposes, entertainment, you know, Netflix, etc., the IE 600 is phenomenal. I loved my time with it for all of the tracks that I threw at it. I think it is a very capable IEM for music listening purposes. But the channel is really oriented for gaming use case scenarios and for the reasons discussed, the IEMs will not be joining the Wallhack tier list. I tested these on my topping E50 L50, as well as my topping A90D and my Gustard X16, ran into the issues on both. And I do need to stress and emphasize, guys, that the default ear tips that come with the Sennheiser IE 600s are absolutely horrendous for directional audio and gaming purposes. So I did test these with spin fits as well as Sedna ear fits, both of which uh, opened up the imaging, opened up the soundstage a little bit and performed much better than the default tips. So if you are going to get the IE 600s, think about upgrading your tips to third party tips if you are going to use them for gaming purposes. I hope that helped guys. If it did, please leave a sub to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next review. Peace.